Welcome to another episode of The Calling and Censored. I'm here with Ellen Shamilov. She is a spiritual wealth catalyst and she helps women that are on a spiritual path um, go through you know, the various phases of the journey and answer the call to be of divine service and step fully into their mission. So of course, um, when we connected, I had to bring her on the show and I'm going to let her introduce herself a little bit um, and let it, and you can um, share exactly like what it is you do and then we'll dive deep into your story. So thank you, Ellen, for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's really exciting to collaborate like this. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, so yeah, I feel like I could talk to you forever. We're like so in sync with exactly like our purpose and our missions and what we're here to help do and, uh, you know, our divine missions and stuff. So why don't you just uh, intuitively take us to wherever you want to share on how you got started on this journey yourself? Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm just going to make this like the brief part of it. I had anger in my body, like, since I was a child, my mom used to tell me how I was so angry and I never understood it. I thought it was her fault. It was just blaming all the external circumstances. And, um, you know, it went to a point as I started growing up, I was, um, that about 14 years ago, um, I wanted to commit suicide because I was just at the point where I was at a really low point. I didn't know who to turn to. All my friends shunned me away, made so many mistakes. Um, at back then I looked at it as mistakes and, um, I just went to the point where I couldn't like take it anymore. Mm -hmm. And what actually stopped me, which was really interesting was the fact that at that time I was living with my sister because of the issues I was having. And my sister just took me in randomly in her studio apartment. So I was sleeping in the same bed with her. And what really transpired was I was already at the, the point of, you know, I made the decision and I was already at the point to do it. And right before I could actually wrap my neck, um, I saw her next to me and I just thought she wakes up, sees her dead sister. Like, I can't imagine what that would do to her, you know, mm -hmm. just thinking about it just gets me really emotional because it was that particular point that made me want to stay mm -hmm. and just try to write it out because I knew I could not let her live with that type of guilt. Um, cause I know my sister, I know that it would be really, really hard on her. Um, so that was like the turning point for me when I first said, all right, I have to make a transition. There's gotta be something. So I went to talk therapy for a couple of years and didn't do anything. I wasn't really on my spiritual path back then. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just got swept under the rug and I just lived my life. And then like 14 years later, uh, actually it was about a few, mm, thir 12 years later, I met my husband mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he was my catalyst because being with him just reminded me of all the things I knew since I was a child, like all about the um, divinity, the angels, all of the stuff that I had repressed for a really long time um, just came out. And that's why I call him my catalyst because when I was with him, it was just I was teaching him how to be a little bit more intuitive because he's very logical. He's very, um, you know, physical. He's also spiritual, but not as, as I am. So we're kind of, we kind of both um, help each other in that aspect. Like he helps me ground more in my physical body while I help him get into that spiritual, um, spiritual level where he can, you know, develop more. And we both made a pact that our route together would be, to develop spiritually. And ever since then, we've gone to so many retreats and all these things where um, all of it would just to be healing. That's all our, all our vacations. Like we don't, we don't go to the beach, you know, as much as I would love to. Um, I find this to be more fulfilling because it really cleanses your body and gets you in tune. Um, so all our emotional retreats have been that to help spiritually develop. The juicy part is when I went to Florida with him to a beautiful retreat where we learned about seven life lessons. And at that time, the doctor was telling us, oh, okay, so now you know what these are. This is what's going on in your life. So this is how you do it. And that's it. Okay, you learned your lesson. And I thought, mm, no, there's got to be more. But when we were there, mm -hmm. we went out for, um, it was already maybe the seventh day and we were on a beautiful nature walk 
And all of a sudden I just got so many downloads, higher vibration. It was just like, that was my business in the beginning because that's what I heard. And my husband and I agree that we wanted to do that. I didn't even know what higher vibration was at that moment. I just thought, wow, this feels amazing. My whole body felt so light and so clean. And I just was liberated. I felt free. And obviously it doesn't last because you always have to maintain it. Um, so it, that's where, when the life lessons came in, I thought, how can I incorporate this into my life so I can teach other people how to incorporate this in their lives? And holy moly, it's been such a beautiful unfolding journey. I can't even tell you. <laughs> I well, I think you're, I think you're going to have to tell us. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. Tell but it's, I'm going to have to cut some pieces out because it's so. You're going to have to give us the cliff notes at least a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll get in there. Do you have any particular questions you want to know or? Oh, I'm just listening to your story. It's an amazing story. And, um, you know, and it's very powerful to, especially for maybe people that are listening right now that are going through some of the, some of the darker aspects of, um, the ter more turbulent times of an awakening or coming, you know, personal growth and being able to, um, see you as a shining example that you can turn all of that around. Um, and I know we spoke a little bit before we went on air um, about the stages um, going from victim to um, warrior. Maybe, yeah, for, to warrior and eventually to goddess. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about this cycle. I totally agree with so much. Uh, you know, this is, we're like two peas in a pod. So I'm just really enjoying the story, but maybe you could talk a little bit about victim to warrior to goddess uh, journey. So um, a lot of us, we all go through this, right? Because we, we take free will. Uh, we, we learn on the masculine side, just how to live um, with our ego personalities. We create it and that's fine. But that leads us into victim consciousness where we're living based on fear. We're living like with the idea that things are happening to us and not for us. And we hear that so often by so many spiritual people, but what does it really mean, mm -hmm. right? When you take real responsibility and when you start, like it's on my journey, I was suicidal. I hated my life. I thought I made mistakes. I thought I made mistakes. And then when I looked at my life now, it's like, wait, I was acting like a victim, but I didn't make mistakes. That was my choices. How I responded to my choices, which was going forward, um, is what I need to work on. And then I went from not being a victim anymore, understanding that there's a, um, a certain level of responsibility that we take for our lives, because we know that things are predetermined, right? When you reincarnate um, before that, you kind of go over like, this is what your life is going to look like. And this is what's going to be for you, your imprints and basically what you're going to go through and what you're going to learn. And when we come here, we have free will and how we use that free will is really based on choices. That's what free will is. It's what choices are you going to make to respond to um, all the circumstances you go through? How are you going to look at it? And the seven life lessons tie in so beautifully with that because um, it's the choice of judging yourself and judging your circumstances, the choice of whether you want to hold on to hate or forgive yourself and for others. Those are the life lessons, by the way. Um, I'll go into that in a minute, but it's just the choices that we make and how we respond. So you go from this victim mentality, then you understand that, no, I have responsibility. I'm here where I can do certain things and, and create certain things. And there's way more to creation than that. But then you go, when you're in the warrior stage, you're still in that frame of, I'm not fully happy. I know that I have to take responsibility. I know that I have to do certain things, but what can lead me there to feel fully fulfilled and happy? And that's when you get into the goddess. Oh my God. When you get into the goddess, it's like, you're just totally free. Like, I can't even say how beautiful it is. You're so free from this damnation that you put on yourself mm -hmm. of, of this fear and anxiety and worry and hatred and, and all these other negative emotions that you surround your auric field with. Mm -hmm. And you just you look at your life. Yeah, you just look at your life as such a beautiful thing. 
that's unfolding right underneath, like right in front of your eyes. And all the synchronicities come together because mm-hmm. you're at a place of surrender and love and co-creation. Yes, that's so beautiful. And I love that you talk about the victim, the warrior and the goddess, because I'm so big on working with the archetypes in all of my trainings. And the victim <laughs> archetype is one of the primary fear-based archetypes that we all incarnate with that can play on us. And the warrior is the power archetype that you activate that's, in op- that's the opposite of that. And it's really interesting too that, you know, when I was, you know, with in power versus force, that map of consciousness at the 300 level of consciousness, when you hit that certain level of consciousness, what happens is you step into a state of willingness Mm -hmm. to see things differently, perceive things differently. And you also start to wake up to the concept that you're a co-creator and that things can happen for you. They're not necessarily happening to you. So it's like when you hit that level of consciousness, um, things, you know, it's a conscious, it's a raising of your vibration is a raising of consciousness exactly. that allows you to start to perceive these things from a different angle. Um, and so that's really interesting. That's at the level of acceptance yes. um, and moving into um, getting closer and closer to, you know, obviously the 500 level, which is more, you know, unconditional love, but then you move from warrior into goddess, like what you're saying, like this is very much very similar to the, the main spa- stages of the spiritual awakening process too is like basically what you're describing here and stepping fully into ownership and, and worthiness and self-love and unconditional love for yourself first and foremost, and then every, everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I, you know, on my own journey, I've been uncovering what it really means to love yourself and everybody's going to have their own definition and understanding of it. But what I came to the understanding of, is nourishing your body with the light. What does that mean? It means that as you go through these stages and you're developing and you're evolving, you're learning more about yourself and learning the life lessons that I really feel is super, super important in in this journey. And it's what gets you to that 500 and up level. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really to take in the divinity, right? To connect yourself to the hearts of the galaxy and the heart of earth so that you can combine your heart and be able to live fully in alignment with um, being on this earth plane. And I say being, I emphasize that because it's living literally with intent. Everything that we do, we live with intention through our words, through our thoughts, through our feelings. And that is such an important thing to understand because it really um, it's our creator. It's, it's what creates, it's what, um, makes us the, the powerful divine force that we are. So how can you do that? You take in the light and you, you embody more of the light, right? Because right now when we're going through this journey, we have all this density filled up in our body. We have this negativity, the foods that we eat cause more of the damage to the body and of the density. Um, you know, so it's all of these things, even the toxins in our makeup, it's, mm-hmm. it's yeah. to that point that it really just drains the energy. So mm-hmm. when you bring in more of the light and clean up your, your, your diet and clean up your, your, just in, your, your general thinking, yeah. that's, that's, you know, the self-talk, that's all self-love. That's what self-love really means. Yeah, I agree with that. And I went, I can relate. I went through a huge purging phase and super, you know, cleaning on all levels, right? So mentally, physically, emotionally, um, makeup, food, environment, people, relationships, situations. Like if it wasn't serving a higher purpose and it wasn't replenishing or healing to me, like, you know, it, it was being pulled, it was being shed either consciously by me making the choices. And sometimes without me willingly, you know, wanting it, you know, cause sometimes we think that, Oh, something's happening again, happening to right. us. And so these are just blessings in disguise when something's being taken out of your experience, that's no longer an energetic fit because it's not where you're headed and not where you're going and what you're not, where you're in, a, what you're in alignment for. So sometimes that can look like a disaster to you, but in actuality, it's a blessing in disguise. So, and you're right. That's where the victim mentality comes from because a lot of us, it takes so much time for us to get that right. But then how, how do you realize it? If you can look back at your life 
and just say, oh, wow, if this didn't happen, then that situation wouldn't happen. I wouldn't have met that person. Then that person was the one that connected me to this. And I would, it's like, you know, that things are actually working in your favor. It's all synchronistic. So it's like, why, why do you have to hate everything that's coming your way and fight it? Just embrace it, go through with it and just let that be part of your experience. Yeah. I'm so, I'm laughing right now because this is the conversation I had with myself this morning. I was sharing with you before I went on the air, um, how the storm last night pretty much ripped out the first front of my roof. (laughs) And last weekend it was a slab leak. Uh, water was oozing out all night long when I was sleeping. It was like a slab leak, Uh, a water pipe busted under the slab and cement on the patio. So it's like one thing after another. And so I, I woke up this morning and I, I was like, what's that? I was like, looking out the window and it's like, oh, it's my roof. And so I opened the door in the whole patio. And like the first thought was like, wow, everything is just working out for me. Like everything that's not even in alignment, even with my house and my surroundings, anything that's been weak or not really in like a strong foundation, you know, is like making itself aware so it can be fixed and it can be rebuilt and it can be stronger than it was. So it's like, that's a different level of perception, right? Like yeah. when you look at something and you're like, that's not the first perception you look at when your roof is all over your front yard and you're getting ready to, you know, and you're like, yeah, like I recognize the synchronicity. And this is how much universe is working on. When you can recognize the day-to-day things even and recognize the hidden messages behind it, I'm like, that's really interesting. Not just once, not just twice. Now this is three times that this is happening. And it's all, you know, like, and that not to mention the, the landscaping tree issue, like there's another issue and they're all happening at once and everything's coming together um, better than it was before, but it's happening through like everything that's been sort of like, it's sort of like the tower moment, you know, it's like the tower hits and you have a tower moment and all the shit that's not really meant to be there sort of crumbles away, you know? Yeah. And so, so the foundation can be stronger yeah. and, and that's the realization. So when you said that, like, that's literally the thought I was having this morning, right before we hopped on this podcast, I'm like, this is great. This is all going to work out in my favor. Everything's going to have, it's going to be back to normal, even better than it was before and stronger foundation than it was before. But I look at it as a metaphor because it's really true. Like it's really like a metaphor. And, and when you take it to that level, you recognize that everything is serving you. Yeah. It's such a beautiful thing, you know, to be able to live in that type of, um, I'm going to say that grace because it is pretty much grace. It's the power within you to be able to look at it um, from the observer perspective and, and not attach yourself to this stuff that's going on around you, even though if, it's, if it seems bad, there is no bad or good. There's positive and negative, but that's what potential and the opposites are all about. The polarity, law of polarity is, all right, well, if this negative thing is happening, then it must be a tidal wave that's going to be the opposite effect right so we have the law of rhythm and then the law of um polarity playing its role here because we know that within all these laws there's an up and a down there's an opposite side so where there's good there's bad where there's bad there's good in those terms right yeah in this physical world that yeah that we exactly right yeah that you know this 3d physical reality yeah that's That's exactly Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's, I, I created, um, this light code activation for that purpose, you know, um, to, to be able to embody more love and light. Um, it's more light because light turns into love. So it's when you get that and clean out your system, you really start to do that. So what you're saying right now, when you become that observer and you have that perspective, that's what got me into this zone because, you know, learning the life lessons is one thing. When you have that in your mind, it's like, okay, I know I was judging that person. All right. I'm not going to kill myself over this. I'm just going to understand that this is the mistake I made. How is this number one? Um, not mistake, but I caught myself in it. So that means that there's still something there. Right. So I'm looking at it and saying, why am I judging that person? What is it in that person that's bothering me? And then I can reflect on it and be able to say, okay, well, now I know. And you catch yourself, right? Because you become the observer. But um, it's in some cases with some of the life lessons, it's hard to do because you're so attached to it. So it's really important to embody more light 
to be able to give you that different perspective. Do you know, like with yeah, the, ego? the ego, lo the ego <laughs> loves to attach to the story. The ego loves to attach to the yeah. story. You have to really bring yourself into the present moment in order to detach from the story that the, the ego will cling to your victim story and it'll cling to everything, anything that it can get its hands on, including your spirituality to keep you stuck. This is where spiritual bypassing comes in, right? Anything that keeps your eye off of the prize of your own ascension journey. And when you're attached to your victim story as part of your story and you're attached to that, like identified as it, then that makes it really like hard to release the victim story when you're start, when you're always perceiving yourself through it and that's how you're identified. Yeah. Um, you see, when I had all that anger, I can't tell you all these things that I did on an emotional and physical perspective, the things that I did to help. And it, it's for some of the listeners who might I identify with this, it, it's hard or it could be hard to be able to get yourself in that perspective of, I need to detach, right? How do you detach? Because you have this inner voice that ego that's talking like we all have that intuition we can hear it but some of us have it so low because we're so toxic in our bodies from all the things that we mentioned earlier that we have such a hard time to listen to that little voice and it, it, so, and it is more sometimes at least starting out um until you're attuned to listening to it it is more of a quote-unquote little voice the ego is like loud and like waving red flags and doing everything <laughs> to get your attention and very, very loud and easy to listen to, right? Yeah. Intuition is often, even as a clear audience, you know, like I hear spirit and I can, you know, in a clear cognizant, um, sometimes the intuitive thoughts, they go right under your radar and they're very easy to miss because they are so subtle sometimes. And sometimes they're not subtle at all, but it can be, especially if you're just learning how to fine tune and listen to your intuition if the ego voice is so small, it sort of drowns out like your intuition. So yeah, that's why I said the first step in, in really going anywhere is embodying more light because mm -hmm. when you embody the light, your higher self, your intuitive self, your I am presence starts to, first of all, get more um, anchored into your body. So then it becomes louder. And then you hear like this inner dialogue, you hear a conversation literally in your head, and you're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And now I hear this other thing telling me this. I didn't hear this before. Okay, what's, what's happening? Um, and that's like where the learning phase comes, where you actually get to learn more about yourself. Like, okay, so this is this and this is that. And, and um, this and that being like the higher self versus the, um, the ego, right? Mm -hmm. Then you want to bring them together. Because your higher self, I mean, your ego, it doesn't want anything bad for you. It's just scared. Mm -hmm. And it's, it stays in that victim mentality because it doesn't know anything more. It has ceilings and walls to, you know, what this potential is, because this is what we learned in mm -hmm. our environment, right? So um, what happens? We just bring our ego and our higher self together. Mm -hmm. And that's where the goddess comes in. When you bring them together and you recognize that the ego personality wants to help you, they both have something in common. The ego loves you. The higher self loves you. The ego wants the best for you. The higher self wants the best for you, right? That's why they protect you in that kind of sense. So they come onto common ground where you're not just shutting down your ego because you need your ego to live. That's right. your free will. <laughs> That's yeah, I love you. Yeah, embracing the ego as a tool for your ascension journey is probably the highest thing that you can do as far yes. as moving your ascension journey rapidly, accelerating on your journey is not to demonize the ego, but to recognize and use it as a tool itself. Exactly. And the best part is, it's like now we understand, okay, the higher self is already this evolved soul that's just coming in to help us. And the ego is what we're teaching these lessons to, because now it's saying, all right, listen, ego, um, this person is this, and this is what's going on. So let's, let's clear that out of you, right? Let's clear our subconscious mind and, and get this new thing going because we don't believe this anymore. We believe this new thing. We are love. And but the ego by definition is always believes in separateness, like regard, like it's the opposite of oneness, right? It's about separateness. And so you can only, you can't, I don't know if, 
if I believe I can teach the ego anything, like the ego is always going to be grounded and rooted in separateness. It's more like just you, for me, at least using it as a tool and recognizing its goal is to keep me safe, but it's very yes. limited view as to what that is. My soul wants to expand into oneness. My ego wants to keep me in a box by myself and recognizing when that flares up. Yes. Just throwing, yeah, I love this conversation. Okay, so oh, where were we? <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, with, with that being said, that's, that's why I believe you are going to be able to determine mm -hmm. the, the different voice, right? Because that's where the journey comes in. You get to hear, but this is what's going on. And like you said, it helps to evolve. But there comes to a certain point where we are co-creating with that, right? So you have that part that that's who's surrendering, right? That's who's letting go. It's the ego. You're, you're, you're letting that happen through you so mm -hmm. that when you say, for example, I want X, Y, and Z. And, you know, if divine will, if it works in, 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 in the divinity, in your divine plan, it's going to come to you the way it's meant to come to you. So mm -hmm. detaching from that and just saying, this is my intention. This is what I require. This is my decree. And you just go on and live your life and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. The next thing is a synchronicity. You'll hear yeah. the light bulb, right? And you'll hear your higher self, oh, go do this. It's, it's really taking mm -hmm. that voice and saying, oh, I'm supposed to go do this and just go run with it, right? But we, we, we have to be able to get to that point where we're strong enough to listen to that other voice that has come in Mm -hmm. and to really follow through with it. Yeah. And I think that's the important part to, to emphasize here that we're, we are essentially transcending the ego to work in co-creation, right? Because that's the goddess. That's the beauty of the creation. We stand tall on our two feet, fully anchored in, knowing and gracefully living our life because we know that whatever is coming our way is because we have created it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You use the word require and that's very key for goddess energy requiring <laughs> versus need. <laughs> it's a very different love vibrational frequency. Of course, of course it is. It's, it's a, I teach about the words that we use as part of co-creation, right? Because like I mentioned before, um, if we are always in this mentality, how do you get out of the victim mentality? Right. You learn to love yourself. You learn to embody the light. You learn to release. And like you said, you clean out your life. Things will start to come to your attention and you have a different perspective. When you become the observer, you can see things that, that, that there's potential. That's the law of potential, right? Mm -hmm. Potentiality. There's, there's that potential that can mold in any way. So mm -hmm. then you use the right words. You mm -hmm. use the words that are a high vibe that's going to attract a different vibratory mm -hmm. circumstance. Yeah, so true. It's so powerful. I love. I love all of this. And the goddess, <laughs> you, you're referring to the goddess. I refer to that with my clients as the Empress energy. You know, the queen. Oh, queens, like you know, the one that attracts all about creation and attraction and really stepping into full ownership. I love working with the archetypes, um, and I love uh, the way you weave all that together. Um, re regarding the victim there, I had a question. Um, yeah, I guess I was just trying to think like what woke me up from my victim mentality back when I was really like, shit was really hitting the fan for me and everything was, did seem like it was having, it was like one thing after another. And I was having my, what I call my perfect storm. Now it was like four years of just complete things collapsing. And I think it was, you know, I almost think part of this is divinely guided to come out of snap out of your victim mindset, because it was just a moment of clarity where I finally asked and surrendered to, I was starting to receive, I mean, I, I suppose I was opened up prior to my spiritual awakening in 2013, but it really hit home and opened wide open in 2013. Um, but the thing that really shifted everything for me was asking the spiritual law of requests, asking for the next step and not for someone to come put a bandaid and solve my problems. Oh, please fix my money or fix this or fix that. No, it was asking. And I teach on this all the time, asking from the, for the soul growth lesson, for the wisdom, for whatever I need to integrate, 
for my own, and I wasn't asking in those terms, like, what's my soul need for ascending? You know, that's not the way I was wording it at that time, but I just specifically with intention asked, um, what's the next step to heal my life? Taking, implying that I'm, ta I'm healing my life, right? So it was me taking, taking accountability ownership. and ownership for it, recognizing that, and it was coming from that place when I asked, and that's when the synchronicity, that's where I got the intuitive download to go to a bookstore and I made a beeline to one book and that book changed, popped up like five times in my life, like within three days and it was a synchronicity, but it was like, that started the synchronistic events was me really asking from a place of intention for me to take the next step, look, asking for the next steps to heal my life. There's a different form of prayer. It's a different form of prayer when you ask the right way i feel like when you're asked when you're taking accountability because i don't think our, like we do have these guides and angels and, and and spirit team guiding us and they're not there to do parlor tricks for us they're there to help us ascend and when you really ask from that wholehearted place with intention like you if you're asking you will receive if you're at that place where you're asking it will always come yes yes and i i highly recommend that and this is what i did all the time is just talk to your, like I knew I had angels around me since I was a child. And it's not that I could see them. I just felt this presence. And I even had circumstances, like situations where they would make themselves known to me by opening my hand or doing certain things. It was just really freaky stuff. I used to even see a spirit um, that actually scared me. I'm sure it wasn't to hurt me, but it scared me. That's what kind of what shut me down. But as I got into this, I, I, I remembered so much that I used to connect with them so many times. And I used to ask them for stuff and do all these things and even give them vows that I didn't even realize, oh, please, if something like this happens, I promise I'll do X, Y, and Z. And I never kept my word. And now I'm being so like, I'm looking at it thinking, I have to be completely honest with myself and completely honest with them, keep my word, because that, you know, I made these vows and I broke them and I felt guilty about them. And mm. yeah, so, you know, it's- yeah, Those it, vows are powerful because, you know, they, you know, I, I remember saying the same thing and, and, and planting vows and, um, and then sure enough, like it would happen and I'd be like, okay, I need to follow through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, all these things, like really what I would urge your listeners to do mm -hmm. is to just, just have a reflective moment about your life. Like if you're really in the moment where you're not liking what your situation looks like, if you're sad, if you're depressed, or if you're worried or anxious or anything like that, whatever journey you're going through, just reflect on what has led you up to this point. And then know, like from from just viewing all of that, what led you there? How did things like this work out in the past? And know that when you can see the synchronicities, that things are just going to work out. That'll relieve so much of the anxiety, right? And then, you know, when you get to the point of least desperation, we can use the law of requests and say, uh, please, I'm surrendering to you. Just give me this lesson. Tell me, where am I going next? And don't expect an answer right away because you won't hear them right away, especially when we're in this moment of opening up because we are hoping to hear an answer and ego can just right away jump in. I've had that so many times. Um, just know that the answer is going to come. You just have to be um, really in that surrendering state. Just ask because asking you shall receive is definitely something yeah, that I work with very fast. I I feel it can come fast if you're open. Yeah. To it. Yeah. The synchronicities, they give you signs. Sometimes when you're really, really open, when you've gone to that level of being completely open, you can hear the answer. But for the majority of the time, especially when you're just beginning, it's mm -hmm. going to be harder because um, you're, you're just at that stage of like fully surrendering or just surrendering or just like really asking in a different vibration versus desperation. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a level of where if you're still attached to the, to the story or the pain or the, or the story and you're still- Or an outcome. Or an outcome, yeah. And if you're still identifying with the victim when- Yeah. It's like you, if you're identifying with the victim when you ask, I don't think it's as- like you, There has to be a, like a separation from that where you recognize that there's a higher power and that you're separating yourself from the victim identity. 
And also what you said, something was really important that you're taking ownership now. Yeah. Right. It because be that's a of willingness, like uh, willingness, exactly. some kind of acceptance of what is at the moment and willingness and then taking ownership. Right. And that's when it's like, okay. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, um, you know, surrendering, that's part of one of the life lessons It's control. So there's seven life lessons. We have, um, separation key in separation is one of the biggest things I've seen in a lot of people who suffer with IBS. Um, then you have, um, forgiveness, judgment, identity, control, divine guidance, And unconditional love. Mm-hmm. The seven life lessons. If you can look at that, I'm sure you can already put them all together, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you can look at your life and just, let's say the victim personality or in, in the victim circumstance, right? When you reflect on your life and when you can look at all these things and say, hmm, this happened to me. It didn't happen to me. It happened for me, right? Because if that didn't happen, this wouldn't happen. This wouldn't happen. Okay. So here's a level of releasing judgment because you didn't mess up. You made a choice. You made a choice and now you have another choice to make of how you're going to respond. So releasing that judgment of the situation, releasing the judgment on yourself, releasing that judgment from whatever the situation is, that's the first part, right? Then you can look at it and forgive yourself because if you did judge yourself and you did Um, do whatever it is that caused you to feel this anguish in your life, just forgive yourself and the person, even if you didn't hurt anybody, forgiving yourself for being in that state of judgment, allowing yourself to feel that, that kind of like love for yourself because forgiveness has a higher vibration than, than judgment, right? So you're getting a step up. Yeah. Forgiveness is going to be the breakthrough and like acceptance almost, I think borders right there with forgiveness because sometimes it's easier to come to a place of acceptance than it is a place of forgiveness, at least for a lot of the, uh, a lot of the women that I know that are, um, have been in my spiritual mentorship program. It's not so much even forgiving themselves, even though they, that's still part of it. It's releasing resentment and anger for what's happened with someone else. So it's like, they struggle with forgiving somebody else, not necessarily themselves, even though it is a self-love journey in there, you know? And so I always recommend that, you know, if you want to take the highest perspective, you can recognize and come to a place of, even if something terrible happened on a soul to soul level, it's not the soul that did it, right? It's the ego that did it. It's the unevolved ego it's the unevolved personnel it's the personality or the ego that Mm -hmm. um it's not the soul that did it right so it's like if everybody's always operating based on the best that they can at the level of consciousness that they're at at that particular moment then you can release judgment on yourself because you didn't know what you know now right and you can release judgment on others because on some level you attracted it so you could have that experience first which is hard to hear for a lot of people depending on where they're at Um, but also that when you can, you can't forgive, you can't fake forgiveness. You can't fake forgiveness if there's still an energetic charge there. It doesn't work that way. So you have to be able to release and surrender the charge to it. And the best way you could probably do that in some, in a lot of cases is to elevate your perception to the higher perspective perception that if we're all souls here having a physical experience, recognize that we've attracted certain situations that have accelerated our own growth process for us and each person is they're not enlightened beings they're acting from you know their own woundedness so think of them as almost like a little child that doesn't know any better they're acting from their own woundedness this doesn't condone behaviors that are unhealthy or anything like that but it is saying like this i cannot harbor this energy anymore because someone else was acting from a wounded unenlightened place that makes absolutely no sense for me to carry this anymore because someone else was not able to reflect back love and divinity to me because they were not capable of doing it for themselves right i completely agree with that and um it actually brings me into separation which sometimes could be first and sometimes could be in between right because like you said, you have to be at that certain level. And it's totally true. You do. You have to be at a certain level where you can, um, you have to have that intention. You can't just say, I forgive and whatever, because of the energy behind that intention 
is not pure, it is not going to give you any of that higher level perspective or into that full release of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So separation is that law of divinity, right? Is that idea of we are not separate from God. We are not separate from source. We are, source is in us. It's in our heart. And if source is in our heart, that means we are a piece of God. We are a God on, I say, that's why I say goddess, because we are goddess or a God or a goddess, whatever you want to call it in a physical body. Mm -hmm. And it's how you embrace that, right? Because you know, now you're not separate. You're not different from anybody because we all come from this one piece. I am you, you are me. And it's like, I used to laugh when people said that. And now I completely understand it. And I just ask that people really just listen to that because, and take it in because when you really can understand the law of divinity and really understand how we are all in this together and how our electromagnetic fields really impact one another, one person can make a big impact in a room and it can change so many lives instantly. So understanding we're not separate, understanding that this person, like what you said, right? This person hasn't gone to that level yet. I'm going to have this compassion for them. I'm, I'm, I, I've been there. I understand. They're not, they're not there yet. So why do I have to hold that? And it's also part of like the four agreements. Have you heard of that book? Yeah, the I have. Agreements? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's don't take things personally, mm -hmm. right? Because you're right. We have this... Um, this thing where we are attracting people when we're vibrating at a certain frequency, we are going to be seeing it more often because it's something we need to work in ourselves, right? We have to evolve from that. And this but, is where I can see a lot of spiritual bypass and come in and go, oh, I just don't take anything personally. So that's their problem. That's their problem. Thanks for being an asshole. That's your problem. You know what I mean? But you really have to look and see why am I available for this? Why am exactly. I available? If you are triggered by it, it's because you do have something that they're hooking into in your system. And so spirituality is such a paradox, right? Because <laughs> here we are talking about taking control of your own destination by co-creating and taking control using your free will and like being the leader in your own life and being the star of your own show and yet surrender everything to a higher power at the same time, right? So it's like spirituality is such a paradox. And just like we can yeah. say, like, let it go because that's them and that's their issue, and which is true. There's still a mirror there's still a reflective lesson there for you and it's very easy to get caught in deflecting that away and saying well that's them and not you know what i mean so it's really important to look for patterns i feel if there's a pattern popping up i agree because um you know with unconditional love when you have that unconditional love for people you're not triggered anymore and you know some people may still be triggered i don't think anyone's going to be coming out of this earth plane completely perfect um there's still going to be some stuff and that's always why we are always evolving we're always vibrating we're always moving the energy is always moving but it's important to be the observer because when you get to that that state of being the observer right that is like the part that helps us to say what we want and then i have that like i'll give you an example i wanted a car and um like i love cars right the materialistic part of me i love cars and there's one beautiful car that i really really wanted out of nowhere it pops in um as an opportunity and then i thought about it and i said you know what i have a certain value and i'm just gonna bring it out there and i'm not gonna think about it anymore and i heard ego keep talking about it keep mentioning it and i was like no i'm letting this go if this is meant for me it'll happen if it's not then i'm not I'm not going to put my family on the line just to pay for this car. It's going to take over my life. Um, and it's really hard for me to, to take that perspective, or it was hard for me to take that perspective because in, back in the day, because I love cars and that's like my thing, right? My, my, the only materialistic thing that I have is cars. <laughs> so for me, it was that love for this beautiful thing that I can have. And I had to, put myself in this shoes of, it's just a thing. It's not going to go with me anywhere. It's not going to help me evolve in any way, you know? So I'm, just, I'm not going to let it take over my life. Do you understand why I'm bringing this up? Like, it's just having that, that ability to see it for what it is and let go, not attached to it. And I was able to let it go. I just said, okay, it wasn't meant to be. It's fine. 
I can live my life without a freaking car. And it's, 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 it gets to the point where when you become like really the observer, things like this that you never thought you would say or do just come up and it's, huh, okay, this is interesting. And you go with it. So that's where I feel I can mend that paradox. I mean, I do, I, I, trust me, I, <laughs> getting, becoming the observer, it becomes really hard sometimes. But um, I feel like when you embody more light, and that's where a lot of the changes came for me going into the goddess. It was when I started embodying so much more light um, mm-hmm. that a lot of things were just coming out and clearing itself from, from my mm-hmm. physical body. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. For manifesting, for me, I think the spirit, like the law of surrender, when I don't need something, but I just, I still allow myself to desire it because that's, I feel like our desires expand us. That's when they show up. That's when they manifest. Interesting. <laughs> seven pillar manifesting formula I teach is the seventh one is surrender. And um, it's when you don't need something, that you can have it. And you're not clinging to it. You're not attached to it. But that's right. what, and the same with my clients, the same with my income, the same with manifesting clients for my coaching business. I'm not attached to them. And that's when they pop up. I plant the intention of what I require as far as income and clients and, and money and house and travel and things like I desire for my lifestyle. And they pop up like the perfect vacation I'm going on in a few days, like it just is the perfect price and everything lined up perfectly. And now I, you know, and it was just like me letting it go though, but still planting the desire, but surrendering how and when and the really yes. hows and the whens and everything. So you don't, you're not in that neediness energy and you just know that it's coming. It's like that. It's like the Esther Hicks talks about like that, that anticipation, like you're, you're just on any, any, in any moment, another magical, you know, magical thing is just going to ready to pop into my experience. And that's how I live my life. You know, like at any moment, like, are you still surprised with all the synchronicities that you see? I still love the synchronicities because my, I just love communicating with spirit all day long. And so I just live in a bubble of synchronicity. I feel like it's like, it just doesn't, it's just like an endless flow of synchronicity and manifestations and, um, and, and I, I don't think I'm surprised by, I'm just like, of course it's more, it's like, it's like, I, it's like, what is it like? I mean, it, it's been happening. Like you know you're coming and it's just like, okay, all right, here it is. Thank you. You know, I still <laughs> celebrate, I celebrate them. Like I still celebrate them and I still enjoy, I see like they're, you know, I, I enjoy receiving them. I love the two-way communication with spirit and being able to identify exactly like how I want to communicate with them and setting up symbols and synchron that mean certain things. And now they use them. They wow. Use them to communicate with me. So it's like, I'm literally walking around in a bubble of synchronicity and it's just like, it's just like being really good where you're at, but knowing that you can have more because I don't put a lack, I don't put a cap on my abundance. I don't put a cap on my flow. I don't put a cap on money. I don't put a cap on clients. I don't put a cap on cars. I don't put a cap on anything. It's like. You also it, require it and you don't need it. That's the. Yeah. But I don't, yeah. It's just, uh, that would be really nice. This would be cool if, this would be magical if, like I would really enjoy this if, you know, like universe, I know I'm in alignment. You're showing me the signs. Let's do this thing. Come on. Like, and like, this is what I would really require. This is what would light me up. This would, this is what would get me in the energy today. Like, this is fun. Like, show me how you co-create with me. Like, show me signs, show me examples, show me the evidence. Like I'm ready for it. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. Uh, love is abundant. Money's abundant. Clients are abundance. I'm open to receive. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful communication. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like constantly confirming that and then looking for the evidence. I I expect the universe to show me the evidence of the vibrational frequency that I am offering. And I expect it to materialize in my physical reality in the perfect time at the perfect place. And in ways that will surprise me and make me like so joyful and happy and abundant and not from a place of dependent on it, though. It's already coming from a place of I'm there. Like I'm already there. I'm just wait. I'm just like, like, it's like that it's that knowing it's the knowing christmas morning and you know you're going to wake up and the tree is going to be loaded and you get to to look at all the presents and you're just so excited that you can't even sleep yeah it's the knowing it's like the knowing and know the the magic is there on its way it's on its way it's on its way show me the sign and the evidence and then i'll get another wink from the universe and then another one and then another one (laughs) it's just like you just get in that momentum and you ride that momentum yeah yeah that's why 
knowing how to work with these laws are really going to help you be able to move through it, right? Because what you're saying is the law of surrender. It's the, the, the law of divinity. It's knowing that you are, you are a divine being in a physical body. So abundance is just waiting for you to be able to claim it. Yeah. Right? So when you require it and you surrender to whatever you're learning in the process while it's coming to you, mm-hmm. you are still allowing that frequency to be the light, to embody and be graceful with whatever is coming your way. Right? Yeah, and I and I'm just opening up to receive it and 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 knocking down the walls that I've kept around myself for the last, you know, any lingering walls that have kept it out. <laughs> You know what I mean? Any belief systems or limiting belief systems or patterns of behavior or sabotaging tendencies or anything like that. I'm just removing those. Like I'll picture, like I'll call in the light and I'll just see it demolish the wall around me that has been wow. love, abundance, money, clients, cars, houses, travel, like anything that lights me up that's going to allow me to be in my most empowered goddess energy, like <laughs> walls going down. Right. And I'll just picture right. that light coming in to demolish that. Yeah, that's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. And it's a beautiful message for people to know that, that words and intention and, um, you know, having this type of request is going to help them because we're all just like stuck in this bubble of thinking that we have to work so hard to get a certain outcome, right? Mm -hmm. You want to have something, but you can't because you need a certain amount of money or you need to be in a certain place to be able to get it. And then you have to do all these things just to be able to be that person and have those things. It's just like, it's a really, um, mm-hmm. such a like opposite of what we're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. It's the opposite. Yeah. Things come easy when you, when you really have the right intention for it and, yes. you, and you decree what you're looking for to have in your experience and just be able to go with it. Mm-hmm. And I like, like, that's why I feel like the life lessons help people to get that toxicity out of their system to be able to get to that place. Yeah. That's so important. There's a detox and a purging that's going to be the byproduct of calling in that light regardless, especially on the physical body, because (laughs) you're grounding in this new frequency that it's sort of like your body is like a circuit board and you're bringing in all this other higher frequency, but your circuit board only holds X amount of frequency. It's like, you got to like upgrade your circuit board in order to hold more frequency. And sometimes that can feel like insomnia. It can feel like all kinds of different things happening in your body as you go through this, like calling in more light and cleansing and purging the lower densities that keep you from upgrading to this higher circuitry. It's so funny that you mentioned that because um, that, that's exactly what I did with the light code activation. I did a three-stage part into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first part actually cleanses your uh, bioenergetic field from all the stuff that you went through, all the emotions, the parasites, the fears, and all that stuff on a daily basis, right? If you listen to it every day and you are able to clear out that, and what you're doing actually in this light code activation is asking because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going through the phases of calling in certain angels and guides to get to that space. Mm-hmm. So then they learn that this is what they can do so they can just request it, right? Because some people don't know, okay, you're asking, but who are you asking? Who are you connecting to? So sometimes this is good to just get them in that, that mind frame of, okay, I'm talking to this person or this angel and I'm, I'm able to, to get my healing team to come and do certain things for me. So the mm-hmm. first stage is like clearing out the bioenergetic fields. And then the second stage is making the body strong enough to hold more light. Because like you said, it's a circuit breaker, right? So we need to be able to do that. And what it does is when it, when it kind of patches the holes, you can say, <laughs> and clears out the density, it can actually have more space to hold the light. And then the third part is the actual light code activation where you're asking your angels to now activate more light in you. And you can do it every day. Mm-hmm. Um, it won't necessarily activate more light in you every single time you ask, but it's the first two parts that really make the, the body prepared to be able to hold that circuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very powerful. Um, I love that. 
<laughs> Thank you. No, you should try it. If you have a chance, try it. I mean, you're already vibrating high, but I'd love to know what your experience is because I hear so many different experiences from people who've done it. Like one lady who just lost her mom. This was a few months ago, but she just lost her mom. Um, at that moment when I gave it to her from COVID and she was so sad and depressed and nervous she felt guilty because she sent a package to her mom and she thought maybe she had something that she put in the package that could have gotten her mom sick. So, um, you know, when I told her about it, I was just really divinely guided because I don't know, I didn't know her that well. And I just kept hearing light code, light code, light code. So I said, okay, you know, I offered her the light code activation and I was surprised. Uh, what, what she told me was just so amazing. Mm -hmm. After one week, she was not even warning anymore. And she was like, is this okay for me? I mean, I've like, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little guilty that I'm not mourning for my mom. And that wasn't the reason why I gave it to her. I didn't expect for her to not be in that mourning stage, but I was hoping that it would kind of take away that fear because even if, you know, it, the fear can be so strong that it can literally manifest for that, that virus or whatever, in this case, the COVID, to be able to get into your system somehow yeah. and yeah. on an energetic level, right? So, yeah. I, you know, I, that was my initial intention to give it to her so she can just keep her body strong enough from getting that, that virus. But the actual result that she got was a lot more than what um, I was, was looking for, you know, to, to help her with. So I'm, and other people who've tried it, they've gone on a high. <laughs> They're just like in this space of, of loving life and being so energetic and having all this time and energy to do things and decisions come so much quicker because you're so now um, attached, well, detached, but more attached to your higher self. So you're hearing that guidance more often as well. And you're, you're, you're getting to that space of, I don't have to waste time thinking about this because I already got the answer. <laughs> That's awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Um, why don't you tell everyone who's listening where they can find you? Um, and if you have any special URLs, of course, I'll throw them in the show notes for the episode. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So it's Ellen Catherine, E L L Y N, Catherine with a K dot com. That's my website. But um, the light code activation, um, if you can add that in the URL, that would be great. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, if you go on my website, I have a little portion on the top and on the bottom in the middle of the page where it says to upgrade your bioenergetic field. Mm -hmm. So you can, um, you know, get that download there, but you'll add the URL. Yeah, I'll add the URL to the light code activation and to your website in the show notes. Um, so anybody that wants to connect with you uh, and, and go deeper with you has that option. Yeah. I mean, I would love for them to just at least try the light code activation because to me, that's the most important. I just, mm -hmm. I created it from such a happy state. The intention that I had was to really get people to open their eyes and see that their life is so much more beautiful than what they, you know, can see it as right now. And even if you are in that warrior state to get you to that higher, that next level of consciousness where you can really be you know, the observer and let go of the anger. Cause trust me, I've gone through that, you know, being angry and not being able to hold myself back emotionally. It's like a demon took over my body and I'm lashing out and erupting like a, a volcano. Mm -hmm. And I went from that to this person that was able to get myself to, to step away from the situation and just say, okay, I'm feeling something right now in my body and this is making me a little irritable. So I'm just going to step away from people so that I don't, lash out and I can just kind of reflect on what's going on, you know? So it really helps people on so many different levels. And I'm, I recommend anybody that's listening and resonate with resonating with this, that to, you definitely check it out. If I had something like that, and I, I believe like as a spiritual teacher, I wasn't meant to, I was meant to go through my experience so I could learn it from the inside out to help others um, as part of my own journey. Um, and it's sort of, it's sort of an interesting process paradox right there. But, um, but yeah, if someone could have handed me that, you know, like now it's like, 
now that you know, like you accumulate your, the wisdom and the, and the guidance and the things that you're open to. And now you create something that allows someone else that's been in those shoes to accelerate their journey. So I recommend if anybody resonates with that, that to definitely check out um, Ellen's website and the link will be in the show notes. So thank you for sharing all of your wisdom with us today. I loved having you on the show. It was very informational and very inspiring. Oh, thank you so much for having me here. And it was such a beautiful connection that we had. And I look forward to, you know, having more collaborations together. Yes, definitely. So you guys, thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for another episode. Namaste.